share a secret recipe. Thailand! Cool, this must be from Bill and his family. I won't be getting there anytime soon, but I can go backpacking in my own kitchen, explore some Thai flavors right here at home. cook dishes from other cultures, my goal is not to be authentic. My goal is to make dinner. But I do take the time to get the ingredients right, especially my favorite bowl of fragrant Thai noodles. And it's got three simple steps. You begin with an aromatic flavor base, you add an aromatic broth, and you finish it with noodles. It couldn't be simpler. Now for that flavor base, I always use coconut milk, which actually has two purposes, as you're about to see. And then I've got to choose between the paste, the curry paste. I've got red curry paste and green curry paste. The red stuff is actually a little bit milder than the green, and the color is really dependent on which chilies they use. Red chilies, red curry paste, a little bit milder. I think I'll use that today. I've been playing around with Thai food for a long time, and I used to just open up my coconut milk cans and dump them right in. But then I met this fellow from Thailand, and he taught me that Thais actually take the fat, the thick part, off the top of the can and use it to saute with. That's because this is pure coconut oil right there, solidified pure coconut oil. And as that starts to heat up and melt and turn into that pure fat, then I'm ready to saute my curry paste. And by doing that, I take some of the heat out of it, but I also brighten up all the aromatic flavors that it has. The chili heat will tone down a notch or two, but all the other flavors will get turned up nice and loud. Now this is the only time in the dish when I have a high saute heat, so I've got to take advantage of that. There's a couple of ingredients I'm going to add right now some protein and some cilantro. I was pretty lucky in the market yesterday. I found cilantro with the roots still attached. Now you don't always find this, but when you do, don't chop them off and throw them out. There's a whack of cilantro flavor right there in those roots. Now one more thing I want to add right now while I've got all this high heat is my protein. Today I'm using chicken, but you could just as easily use pork, beef, lamb, shrimp, whatever you happen to have is going to work just fine. I'll simply saute that for a while. Give that a minute while I wash all this chicken off my hands. All right, it's starting to sizzle in here. Careful you don't breathe in the vapors of the curry paste. You're going to be hacking your dinner all over your clothes. And all those ginger aromas that I'm smelling right now got me thinking. I've got an idea for a quick snack. I'm going to need a lime. The riper the better. There's a good one. I'm going to need some club soda. And some frozen ginger. Oh, and some corn syrup. Everything I need to make my own ginger ale. I love this stuff. Here's how I do it. Just like any pop that's out there, it's always sweetened with corn syrup. And then I'll zest a lime into this. Now, frozen ginger. Top up the works with club soda. Mmm. Oh man, I love that. Mm. This is shaping up nicely. Step one's all set. The aromatic flavor base coming up next. The aromatic broth. noodles my style. I began the aromatic flavor base with the thick cream from a can of coconut milk, pure coconut oil. I added red Thai curry paste and sauteed it to brighten its flavors. 
the roots from a bunch of cilantro were added, then finally, chicken breasts, sliced thinly and sautéed. My flavor base is done. And it's ready for step two, the aromatic broth. And for that, I'll simply add the rest of the liquid from the bottom of the coconut cream. And I'm going to add an entire new can of coconut cream as well. The cream from the top and the liquid from the bottom. And some chicken broth too. So I've got roughly equal amounts of chicken broth and coconut cream. And now that I've got all my liquids in the pot, it's time to aromatize them. And this is when Thai cooking gets really cool. First up, lemongrass. So named because it tastes like lemon and it looks like grass before it gets chopped off. But that's not all. There's also fish sauce, the single most common flavoring in Thai cooking, and lime leaves. Check these out. In Thailand, everybody's got a lime tree growing in their backyard, and they use the leaves to aromatize the food. And best of all, these days, you can find all these ingredients either in your local supermarket or at a local Asian market. Every time I come here, I feel like a kid in a candy store. I know the unfamiliar always seems exotic, that's just human nature, but don't let that stop you from trying out some of the amazing flavors at your local Asian market. Thai fish sauce, Nam Pla. Believe it or not, it's made by fermenting whole fish in brine barrels left out in the sun. As you can imagine, it tastes pretty strongly. But so do Western condiments. It's a seasoning, and it tastes awesome when it's diluted. And it's essential for true Thai flavor. Mmm, the leaves of the kaffir lime tree. These are as common in Thai cooking as bay leaves are in French cooking, and they should be. Their intense, aromatic perfume tastes amazing. They're probably the reason I'm so addicted to Thai cooking. I tend to add quite a few lime leaves, six or eight. They're so fragrant. Now, here's what I do with lemongrass. Trim it off right about where the stalk starts to turn green, right in here. Bruise it a bit. Really open it up. Break those walls inside. It'll help the flavor come out. And now for the fish sauce. It's got an incredible funky, I left a bag of fish in the back seat of the car for four weeks smell to it. It really smells weird. Until you put it in the broth. And once it's mellowed out in the broth, it really adds a nice savory tone to it. Now that I've added my aromatic ingredients, I'm going to give them about half an hour or so to simmer and do their job to aromatize that broth. It's perfume time. While I wait, I've got time to make a salad. Now, pineapple. It's nice and ripe and ready to go. You know, when I cook Thai food, I always think about fusion cooking because so many chefs take Thai flavors and work them into Western cooking. So I'm thinking definitely something fusion with this pineapple. And I guess the cilantro flavor would be the flavor to bring along. It is the world's most common herb flavor. And there's no reason that it wouldn't work in a dessert. Let's see what happens. I think I'll cut it very thin. You always want to get rid of that woody core there in the center. It's pretty tough. But I don't throw it out. I snack on it. It's got tons of flavor. Nice and thin. Now rather than just chop cilantro up and toss it into the pineapple, I've got a better idea. I'm going to use some sugar to chop it up. The sugar helps grind up the cilantro a good place to add one of those lime leaves as well. Check that out. Beautiful. That yeah, totally works. It's ready to toss on pineapple. Nothing to it. This is going to be cool. What else? 